This is section 8.1, Direct Variation and Proportion. Here were today's goals, defining direct variation and the constant of variation, solving linear direct variation problems using y equals mx, and solving direct variation problems using proportions. So this was the lecture that we went over in class today. This video is merely provided for you as a review. Direct variation is everywhere in life, and some of the examples that you guys gave in class today were probably better than the ones I have here, but these are just ones I had off the top of my head. The more stuff you buy, the more tax you've got to pay. If you buy an Xbox versus buying a CD, the Xbox is going to have more tax attached to it. The more you study, the better you do in school. The more time you spend preparing homework and reading stuff over, the generally speaking, the better you'll do on tests. The further you advance in a video game, the harder the level gets. Think of a simple game where you just do some basic things the first time you play, but as you get further and further along, the levels get more and more challenging. Finally, the more Kool-Aid powder you add, the more water you need to add to it to make the flavor taste right, so that Mr. Kool-Aid can run through a wall and say, oh yeah. Now, a linear function back in chapter 3, this is the line y equals 2x. What you notice is that as x goes up, y goes up as well. As x goes down, y also goes down. This is what we call a direct variation, and it takes the form of a line, generally speaking. Now, we'll learn some when we get to proportions that are not lines, but all you need to know is that as x goes up, y goes up. A linear function defined by the equation of the form y equals mx, where m is not 0, is called a direct variation. We say that y varies directly as x. We call m the constant of variation. Basically, you're going to have a ratio. As x goes up, y is going to go up. m is going to be the factor of x that makes y go up. It's just like the slope when we looked at the line on the previous slide. So, for example, 1, if y varies directly as x and y equals 25 when x equals 15, you are to solve for x when y equals 40. So, you take your equation, y equals mx, you're first going to solve for m using the two points, the two values of x and y that you're given. So, you plug those in. 25 in place of y and 15 in place of x, you are going to solve for m. So, the constant of variation is solved for by dividing both sides by 15 and you get m equals 5 thirds. Now, to find x when y equals 40, you just plug it back in. You plug in 40 for y, you plug in 5 thirds for m, and you're going to solve for x. So simply solving for x, you get x is 24. So using y equals mx, use the values they give you for x and y, plug those in and solve for m. Once you know what m is, plug in the other value you know, in this case y, and solve for the other variable, in this case, x. If a varies directly as b plus 5 and a equals 2 when b equals 1, find a when b equals 4. So this one's a little more complicated. You are going to use the same equation, solving for m. But this time, instead of using a single variable for y, you're going to plug the entire expression, b plus 5, in for y, and you'll plug in a for x, because a varies directly with b plus 5. So b plus 5 equals ma. Now you put in your values of a and b. So a is 2 when b is 1. So a is 2, b is 1. Solve for m, you get m equals 3. Again, all you do now is plug it back in. Now you want to solve for a when b is 4. So when b is 4, you plug in 4 for b. You now know what m is. It's 3, and you solve for x. So 3x equals 4 plus 5. So x equals 3. Three. So don't let the expression trip you up. Just pretend that whole thing is just like y and substitute the entire thing when you plug in the number. Now proportions. So on the graph we have a line in the form y equals mx. Two points on the line are x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2. In direct variation, often the graph of the line goes through the origin. So both of those points are ordered pairs of y equals mx. So y1 equals m times x1, y2 equals m times x2. That's basically substituting each point into the general form of the line, y equals mx. If this is the case, let's divide both equations by the x term, and you get y1 over x1 equals m, and y2 over x2 equals m. So you notice that the ratio of the coordinates equal m. This is the constant of proportion. We'll get to that 
right now. So y1 over x1 equals y2 over x2, that equals m. This equality of ratios is called a proportion, and m is the constant of proportionality. So if you have a line that, again, goes through the origin, then this proportion holds true. Not only that, this is a direct proportion if you have a line. A direct variation y is often said to be directly proportional to x. Now, when you do some of these problems, you're not always going to have a line. It's not always going to be y over x. You might have y over x squared equals y2 over x2 squared, or y1 over x1 cubed equals y2 over x2 cubed, or so on. But as x goes up, y will also go up. Now, means and extremes. You will also see the proportion written like this. y1 is to x1 as y2 is to x2. The colon refers to a ratio. So you would say that y1 is to x1 as y2 is to x2. The numbers on the inside, x1 and y2, are called the means. The numbers on the outside, y1 and x2, are called the extremes. And think about why. The extremes are on the outside of the proportion. The means are on the inside. So if you multiply both sides, you get y1x2 equals x1y2. This is basically what happens if you re-express it as a fraction and cross-multiply. So you can see that the product of the extremes equals the product of the means. The extremes y1x2, the means x1y2. Let's look at example two. If a is directly proportional to b cubed and a is 10 when b is 2, find a when b is 4. All right, let's use the proportion formula. So instead of y over x equals y over x, we're using a over b cubed because that's what the proportion is. a1 over b1 cubed equals a2 over b2 cubed. Now all you do is you substitute 10 for a1 and b for b1, 2 for b1 and 4 for b2. You are going to solve for a2. You want to know the other value of a. So plug those values in. 10 over 2 cubed equals a2 over 4 cubed. Now just cross multiply and solve for a2. And when you do that, you get a2 equals 80, which means that if a is 10 when b is 2, then a is 40 when b is 4. And that's how this works. So you're not always going to have something so nice as a, a line. In this case, you have a cubic direct proportion. Let's go ahead and try this one. If y equals y is directly proportional to x squared and y is 12 when x is 4, find y when x is 6. So again, the same way. You first need to create your proportion. Y is directly proportional to x squared. That means you're going to have a y over x squared. y1 over x1 squared equals y2 over x2 squared. And now you just plug and chug. y is 12. x1 is 4. You want to know y2. x2 is 6. Plug those in and cross multiply and solve. y2 is 27. All right, a word problem. The amount of hydrogen produced when sodium is added to water varies directly as the amount of sodium added. If 92 grams of sodium produces 4 grams of hydrogen, find the amount of sodium needed to produce 10 grams of hydrogen. All right, so the first thing you want to notice in the problem is that it doesn't say anything about exponents or other relationships. So you can assume a linear relationship between the amount of sodium added as the amount of hydrogen produced. So let's create a simple ratio. Sodium is represented by the symbol Na, hydrogen by H. So Na1 is directly proportional with the amount of hydrogen added. Therefore, Na2 over H2 equals Na1 over H1. Now you plug the values in. We have 92 sodium for 4 hydrogen. We want to know the amount of sodium to produce 10 hydrogen. So plug those values in. 92 over 4 equals Na2 over 10. And again, you just cross multiply and you solve. And you get that the amount of sodium you need to add to produce 10 grams of hydrogen is 230 grams. So these problems I don't think are that hard as long as you keep your ratio simple and you write it out clearly and make sure you know what you're plugging in. So in summary, direct variation is linear oftentimes. 
And so y equals mx or y1 over x1 equals y2 over x2 equals m. So you can use either formula. You saw that in some problems you want to solve for m and then you plug and simplify. Here you can just skip the m step if all you want to know is the amount of y2 or x2 given the amounts of x1 y1. So just remember if m is positive as x goes up y goes up as x goes down y goes down. That is direct variation and proportion. Good luck on the homework.